Like say shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh Hashem El Shah. Also give a double honor to the elders of GMS and honor to the Akiyam. And peace and blessings to your brothers and sisters that listen. The hopeful elect. Kala Yahweh Hashem El Shah, man. And um, like to do a quick lesson today on prayer, man. Prayer, prayer, prayer. And um, that's something that we all have to do more, man. Myself as well. Um, have to pray a lot more, man. Because um, the day of evil that we always prophesy about is here, man. Um, we can we know through the spirit that another false flag is definitely right around the corner, man. Esau is about to do something major, man. We've been bringing out the articles. We've been looking at the news. We've been looking at the stock market. We've seen the government shut down. And um, the way we prepping, the way we preparing is by crying out to Yahweh Hashem El Shah, man. Keeping the commandments and having faith. And in this lesson, man, praying and pleading to Yahweh Hashem El Shah for mercy, man. For strength, for guidance. You know, like the scripture says, wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times, man. Okay? That you can quench all the fiery darts that's going to be shot at you. All right? Because we all going to be tried, man. All right? Our faith is about to take a whole new turn. So let me read the first precept, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. He said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath, without doubting. So the scripture said what? Um, the apostle Paul said what, man? The apostle said that he, he, I will therefore men pray everywhere, everywhere, man. If you're in your car, pray, man. Right, Yahweh Shai told you how to pray in Matthew the sixth chapter. You pray in secret. You pray in a private room or your closet, wherever you at, man. You know, pray to Yahweh Shai. It's between you and him. See, and the prayers don't got to be long, drawn out prayers, quick and straight to the point, man. Most I know what you're gonna ask him before you say it. So, just get straight to the point, man. The scripture says, "Lifting up your holy hands." You know, we pray towards the east, man. Lifting up your hands, man, towards heaven. Or um, you bow on your face towards the earth. Okay, that shows humility, man. So prayer is very essential, man. Prayer is key. All right, let me get the next precept so I can find this scripture. Is this one? Um, give you one second. Let me see if it's Psalms one nineteen. Matter of fact, let me get Matthew 21. I just want to do a quick, quick lesson on this. Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. It says, Yahweh Shai answered and said, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also ye shall say unto this mountain, which that mountain represents obstacles, man. Okay. That we're going to have to overcome. The obstacles that you probably already overcame. You see. Be thou removed. And thou can cast it into the sea. And it shall be done. See. Do what? He, verse 22. And all things whatsoever he shall ask in prayer. Believing. He shall receive. Man. And that is the truth. Man. In order to pray to Yahweh. You have to know his name. Yahweh is the father's name and Yahweh Shai is his son's name. Okay? We pray to Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh Shai is our mediator. He is our lawyer. He's our redeemer. Okay? And he's fighting on your behalf. You know, some of that clown the other day <clears throat> saying that, that Yahweh Shai is not talked about in the old. Yahweh is not hearing you, man. If you don't come to Yahweh Shai, then you're finished, man. Okay, like scripture say, he that don't believe is condemned already. So you have to pray to Yahweh Shai, pray to Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, man. You have to acknowledge Yahweh Shai, man. All right, honor, worship Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai? You see, it says, in all things whatsoever you shall ask and pray, and believe in, and you shall receive. So if you truly believe or have faith, so you have to pray with faith, man, not doubt. 
and obviously that comes on to you but that's where um we did lessons in the past on fasting man you see what i'm saying fasting afflicting your body and your soul and i'm gonna get that scripture later on okay So, like your Howard Shai said, man, whatever mountain, whatever um, obstacle that's in your way, and we have many obstacles that's in our way, the way you remove it is by simply praying with faith, okay? And that's why King David says Psalms 55, 17. King David said, evening, morning, and noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. So, you know, a lot of our people pray, you know, at least three times a day. At least, like King David says, Psalms 55, 17. And then we get Daniel. Read again, Psalms 55, 17. Evening, morning, and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. But the scripture also says, pray without ceasing. Don't stop, man. Pray all the time, man. Pray everywhere, man. You can never do enough praying. Okay, and pray was to mean to what? To ask, man. To request something from Yahweh Bashim Yahshua. That's a prayer. You see? That's what it says, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and windows being open in the chamber toward Jerusalem because that's how we pray we pray towards the east towards Jerusalem the holy city he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his power as he did a four times so yeah that was in our custom and our tradition you know to pray at least three times a day towards Yahweh Hashem El Shah but like the scripture says in the book of First Thessalonians I quoted it but I'm gonna read it <coughs> It says, um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 17, 16, rejoice evermore, 17, pray without ceasing, so don't stop, so always pray, man. Like I read the first precept, we said pray everywhere, pray without ceasing, okay? You get in your car, you traveling on the road, when you get up in the morning, <clears throat> You give thanks to your Yahweh Hashem El Shah, man. You see? And you throughout your day, you give thanks to your Yahweh Hashem El Shah. Before you eat your food, you give thanks to your Yahweh Hashem El Shah, man. All right? God will protect you to grow in the spirit. You know, so you say things according to the Rakakwa Dash when you're teaching, prophesying. You see? That you stay in his will and his good graces. If you have enemies or adversaries, you don't got to get carnal with them. That's what prayers is for also, man. And we've seen that as well. Them curses work, man. Yahab HaShim Yashat will attend to your prayer. And I'm going to get to that scripture as well. That's why the scripture says this. So the scripture says pray without ceasing. Pray all the time, right? And that's something I have to do more as well. The scripture says Sirach. So I just want to do this quick scripture. This quick um, breakdown. Hopefully it's edifying. Let me get the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35, verse 16. It says, Ecclesiastes 35, verse 13, 16. He that serveth Yahweh Hashem El Shah. And that's an important thing. A lot of our people, their prayers don't work because they're not serving the Heavenly Father in sincerity and in truth, man. They're not worshiping Him in spirit and in truth, man. Because the scripture does say in John the ninth chapter that the Most High does not hear sinners, okay? If you, if you don't keep the commandments, then your prayer is an abomination. You got to acknowledge your sin, repent. All right, and then you're able to cry out to your Habba Shemel Shah and you attend to your cry, man. You see, but you can't just be living any old lifestyle or rejecting the prophets when we go out there and we tell you certain things and think you could just pray to your Habba Shemel Shah. It don't go that way. So there's a certain criteria, man. You see, number one, you have to know his name and then you have to start rehearsing the righteous acts, man, and continue keep repenting, man. <clears throat> Keep examining yourself 
and then you fast, man, and then you keep growing. You see, and that's how the most high tends to your prayers. And also, you got to do the work. That's why it says, He that serveth the Lord, you see, shall be accepted with favor, and his prayer shall reach unto the clouds, man. And you serve Yahweh Shemel Shah. See, the prayer of the humble pierceth the clouds. Until they come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart. Till the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. So the scripture says, a prayer of a humble man, a man that's serving Yahweh Shemel Shah in spirit and in truth, it pierceth the clouds, man. He hears those prayers, man. All right? And in due time, he'll answer it. You just have to keep enduring. You see, you have to be patient, man. All right? It's all about patience, man. That's why, matter of fact, it also says that in James. Get James chapter 5, verse 16, real quick. See, James chapter 5, verse 16. It says, Confess your faults one to another. So, the brethren, you confess some of your faults. Um, between each other and some faults, you just got to confess to how about Shemel Shah. That's also what you do in prayer as well, man. Repentance prayers, man. You see? Like Psalms 51. But it says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. So pray for the brethren. You see? That he may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. So the scripture said effectual fervent prayer. Effectual fervent is what? A man that's productive, a man that's hot in this truth, man. All right. A man that's working in this truth, man. A one that's serving Yahweh Shem Shah, whatever his office may be. You see, because um, Yahweh Shah said he doesn't want any of us to be what? Lukewarm. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spew you out. But if you're fervent, if you're hot, you win this thing totally. It says the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much, man. So, man, that's hot in this thing, man. His, his prayer, like we read in the other precept, his prayer, what? It pierces the cloud. It avail it much, man. See? So, man, you know, the scripture constantly keep telling you to keep praying earnestly. All right? Pray without ceasing to pray for one another. Um, and whatever you lack in the spirit, pray to Yahweh Shemel Shah always, man. Okay? Always cry out, man. I'm going to close it out this last scripture. I just wanted to do a quick, quick lesson on this. Book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 8. It said, Tobit, chapter 12, verse 8. It says, Tobit 12, 8. Prayer is good with fasting. Yeah. So, how you get those prayers to pierce the clouds? Scripture says to fast, man. No eating, no drinking for at least 24 hours. That's a traditional fast. When you afflict your body, you strengthen your spirit. So scripture says prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. So the scripture gives you the criteria, man. You pray, you fast, you give alms, you know, you give to the poor, you help the brethren. And righteousness is what keeping the commandments to the best of your ability. You do all four, pray, you fast, give alms, keep the commandments. So it says, a little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to give alms than to live gold. So scripture says, prayer is good with fastings, man. All right. So the two go hand in hand. Okay. Pray, go on a fast, pray, man. Whatever struggle you're going through. Um, whatever, like Yahweh Shai said, that whatever mountains is in your way, pray and you fast, man. And the scripture also says arms and righteousness, man. See, they all go hand in hand, go all go hand in hand. You see, and it, it deliver you from death. And that's how you purge your sins. And that's how you strengthen your spirit. All right. So with that, say giving up prayers, Yahweh Shem Al Shah. Hopefully this lesson, lesson was edifying. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.